Hey, Brett, I have COVID. Hi, I'm Britt. And my name is Alyssa. And this is Skeletales. And this is the podcast where we strive to answer the age-old question of, is my dead grandma ta- talking to me? <laughs> no, oh my God. <laughs> she might be. <laughs> you know, when you go to a yoga class and you're in this room with very zen people and it's quiet maybe they have some of the music going and you're like yes i'm zen this is good and they're like all right get into the downward dog (laughs) that was grandma that was grandma she's talking it was not the bean burrito you ate last night that was grandma (laughs) she just she's she's like i'm here i'm talking i'm with you (laughs) Dove right in that colon, shaking some stuff up. But <clears throat> why? Why would she do that to you? Humble, just to keep you modest? No, she's just checking in. She's <laughs> just like, hey, hey, it's me, Grandma here. I'm with, you know what? You're calm. Your brain, your brain is cleared for this event. I'm here. I'm with you. <laughs> Um, there's been some pretty funny videos I've seen of like people doing a yoga something and then the farts come. I'm sure there's all Google that just YouTube that if you need a laugh and it's just people (laughs) recording these real Zen serious yoga videos and then someone farts in someone's face and (laughs) (laughs) the laughs ensue. You know what? I think that's it. Grandma's just trying to get a laugh. She's like, this She's is like, y'all, way too serious and uh-huh. boring, y'all. Let's y'all are taking it way up. too serious. <laughs> spice it up. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Alyssa, do we just talk about farting grandmas? No, we don't, Britt. We just tell true tales of the strange, unusual, and paranormal. That's right. Um, we've got some good stories this week, I think. Well, I don't know about you, but I have some pretty decent ones. I have a great story this week. I do. Awesome. I We are going to make this one quick. Let's just be we upfront will. and yeah. straight about this. Brit totally. is packing up her life and moving Ooh. away um, from it. Yeah. Like in, <laughs> in four like days, day I'm loading up a truck and nothing is really in a box. No, oh there, her God, room that. is still, there's a lot yeah. of stuff in the background. There's so much. That I'm like, uh, that should be packed already. I haven't even packed up my ladybug graveyard. There's lots to okay, do. Okay, yeah. We're also having issues about this. Britt literally was <laughs> saying, I'm like, she's, oh, I knocked over my ladybugs. I'm like, what? Are you bringing those with you? And she's like, yeah, yeah. Oh, those I just started collecting. Jewelry box. I'm like, what the fuck is... <laughs> <laughs> well, I keep finding them, and I need a place for them to rest. The garbage can. No, is a place. Feed them to your um your chickens. Wait. Oh, I gave them. Uh, my ch- the chickens are uh, rehomed. Rehomed. Oh, okay. I can't, I was just I'm not. Say. I can't drive a, a week up to Oregon with chickens in the back. What Lunacy. about the rats? Oh, they all died. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the cat and then the cat Penny the comes cat with the we, house it comes with the house um, <laughs> we have some incredible new tenants that are moving in who have agreed to feed our feral cat so we're we're covered we are bringing the dog with us we're not leaving her and uh, yeah and 14 dead ladybugs prior- uh, yes and the dog and 14 ladybugs okay dead. this is why you're having trouble packing and moving bro. <laughs> I can tell. Completely agree. Right okay, now. so I have a, I have, um, you know, I've got some haunted house stories today for us. Are you cool with that? I am so cool with that. I love a haunted house story. A fantastic. Okay, I've got a shorty for our first. <clears throat> this comes from George. He says, as a child, we lived in an old farmhouse. The children's bedrooms were upstairs. I was nine or ten at the time, and I woke out of a deep sleep to the sound of people partying downstairs. People laughing, singing, a piano playing. 
It was not too strange because my parents often partied. They didn't mention that they were having a party that night. Um, So I crept downstairs, and as I got closer to the last steps of the stairway, the noise of the partying and the people got even louder and clearer. I saw that all the lights were on, and as I turned the corner to enter the room, nothing. No lights on, no piano, no people having a good time. I told my mom the next day, and she said I was imagining things. We had a lot of things happen in that house, though. I'll never... (laughs) My God! Brit, throw one ladybug away and see if it fixes everything. Shh. Okay. (laughs) George just says that he never felt frightened in the house, though, even though they had strange things happen. I love the idea of like kind of like that scene from The Shining where he walks into the ballroom and there's a whole party going on like that there's this, you know, a a bunch of a party from an old time like he walked into a different dimension or something. Yeah. Did you ever watch that um, New Zealand show Wellington Paranormal? Is that the name of it? No, I did not watch the whole thing. There was one episode, though, and they walk into these, the cops in the show walk into this noise complaint house, and it's all these people from the 70s partying, and they're like, the music's too loud, listen, nobody's listening, turn down the music. So she goes and unplugs the stereo, and then turns around, and the house is this abandoned, dark old house. There's not a party going on, there's nothing happening, and it's like, woo. I mean, it's all fake and fiction, but this story kind of reminded me of that. Yeah, I kind of want to experience that someday. It's really time travel. I'm a little fascinated. I love a good old time travel mm. book or story or movie. Also, or that's anything. my kind of haunting. Give me a party. Yeah. Some like joyous piano playing. I wonder. I thought I heard a bunch of coyotes last night, but that was probably real life. I don't ever necessarily hear a bunch of parties, but the fact that it got louder as he got downstairs yeah. in an old farmhouse. I think he heard something. Something was bleeding through. I saw some mathematician or physicist or something talking. I think it was on TikTok because uh, I'm on there all the time. (laughs) Um, But it was about parallel dimensions. He likes to think. She. Why am I calling it a he? It was a girl. She. She likes to think. Electrons move through all of these different timelines, and that's where that's where they're going to, and that's why they're moving so fast and never stay still, is because they pop through all of these universes where there's a party going on downstairs in your house at one a.m. in a different universe, or there's you know some completely different people live there in that universe, or yeah. you know. Oh, I like that. It kind of freaks me out a little bit, but I also kind of like it. It's so hard to wrap your brain around that Mm -hmm. there might be a whole other you somewhere that you're not aware of, but like, is it even you then? Are we ready for my story? I am so ready for your story. So my story comes from, oh, it's about haunted houses too. Beautiful. Hey, we have a theme. Look at that. It comes from our friend of the podcast, Steve, and (gasps) Steve has written in before. Beautiful, beautiful writer. He is a great writer. He's an excellent, excellent writer. Um, So Steve says, haunted house? How about haunted neighborhood? (laughs) I've been a police officer in a central Texas city for over 22 years. I spent most of that time on patrol responding to emergency calls. The experiences and stories collected are so vast, they usually get suppressed, stored in some dark corner of the mind, laying dormant until they elect to ooze out from the layers and resurface. After listening to a recent Skeletals episode, a little gem hitched a ride out of the darkness and into the cortex. In... (laughs) In the area that I patrolled, it is not uncommon to respond to as many as 20 calls a day. 
Most of these are not criminal in nature, but more a citizen concern stemming from paranoia or an overactive imagination. A few years ago, I responded to a report of a burglary of a residence. When I met with the homeowner, he informed me that someone had entered his home during the night. He clarified that all his doors and windows were locked last night, and he was not able to locate any forced entry point. I asked him what was missing, and he replied, Nothing. <laughs> Nothing was taken, but he knew some ha- someone was in his house while he and his wife were asleep. He then took me on a tour of the home, pointing out certain oddities. He pointed out a wall-mounted key rack with two hooks. He described that he always places his car keys on the left hook and his wife places hers on the right one. This morning, they were switched. He further. He, um, he called the police for that? <laughs> All right. Maybe there's something bigger. Okay. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. He further stated that he and his wife are avid readers and have a large collection of books stored on a living room bookcase. As collectors, they are meticulous in their display, organized not just by author, but in order of the book's release and tightly fronted in the shelf. When he awoke this morning, the books had been rearranged and pushed back to the rear of the casing. Finally, he pointed out that the living room couch had been moved forward about a foot and pointed to the indents in the carpet where the couch legs had once rested. I left the home thinking he was odder than the events described. (laughs) A few weeks later, I responded to the same neighborhood for another burglary burglary (laughs) report. Please keep that. Too many R's. <laughs> burglary report. Jesus. For another burglary report, <laughs> the telling of events was similar. No entry points discovered. Nothing taken. The homeowner pointed out that her living room furniture had been rearranged and a coat she kept in the hall closet was laid gently over the foot of her bed. One story obviously stemming from a delusion is one thing, but two stories from two different people? That was strange. About a week goes by when I receive a call at about 2 a.m. for a home invasion. The call text read that a young girl had awoken and observed a strange man in her bedroom. This is clearly a serious call and involved the response of multiple officers arriving in mere minutes. The home and surrounding area were thoroughly searched for the suspect as I went in and met with the child's father. He stated that he and his wife had been woken up when their daughter let out a blood-curdling scream. When they ran to her aid, the child explained to them that she had witnessed a strange man in her room. I went to speak to the child. She was no more than seven years old and was sitting on her bed. When interviewing a child, you don't want to just dive in with a barrage of questions. A little distraction technique is best to weaken the ice. Laying on the bed next to her was a doll. I asked her if the doll was her favorite. The child looked tired, not from lack of sleep, but more from the expense of of adrenaline. Her cheeks were red and swollen, her eyes half closed and empty, arms collapsed by her side. She slowly shook her head no, without once looking away from her distant, straight-ahead stare. Her mother stood next to her with her elbow resting on her crossed forearm, nervously biting at her thumbnail. She stated that the doll belonged to the child, but the child did not like it, and it was stored in her closet on a top shelf. I then asked the child what she had seen. She stated that she awoke and saw a tall man standing in the doorway of her room, looking at her. I asked her what he was wearing, and she stated, black. I confirmed that he was wearing black clothing, and she stated, he was just all black. I asked for more details, such as facial features or race. She said that he didn't have any. He was just dark, like a shadow. (sighs) She further described that his neck was long and thin, his arms stretched low, almost touching the floor. 
I asked the father if he had seen anything or noticed anything missing. He stated that while waiting for police, he had checked all the windows and doors of the home and found them all to be locked. He further added that nothing was missing, but his wife per- wife's purse is always kept on the table by the front door. As he checked the house for the strange man, he observed the purse had been moved to a mantle over the fireplace. He stated that the kitchen chairs are all mismatched and seated in the same spot of the table every night. Tonight, they had all been rearranged. And finally, he pointed out that his couch had been pushed forward about a foot and pointed to the indentations in the carpet where couch legs had once rested. The scene was thoroughly processed by crime scene technicians and no evidence was discovered. No footprints outside the house, no fingerprints, and no point of entry. The thought did not cross my mind at the time, but all these years later, it seems apparent that a shadow person or people had been lurking within the confines of this neighborhood. Thank you for the opportunity to tell my story. P.S. Skeletals came through again and saved my sanity from the horror of a drive along the treadmill highway that is I-10 during my recent drive to Arizona. Thank you for the shield of entertainment from the impending boredom. Steve H. Buta, Texas. Steve! For the win! Oh my... Shadow people lurking in a neighborhood, just fucking with people. <laughs> like I not, not even just moving stuff in random places. Just, oh, you know, just to drive people crazy. Is it though? I got goosebumps several times listening, reading, slash listening to this story. Um, do you think it is because, like, isn't one of the the ideas or theories about these shadow people is that they might be like I thought that for sure this guy was going to have a hat once she started describing him. Yes, I thought do. it was going to be Hat Man, but like they're checking in and they're doing like what? Maybe they came from under the couch. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh. That's how they creep out from the well, shadows. So hat Man is an observer, like he doesn't typically interact it's just watching which is what's very creepy about him these people aren't just what or these shadow this shadow whatever they're actually doing stuff moving things tricksters they're tricksters so did the shadow man get that creepy ass doll from her top shelf and like throw it at her just to torture her that is my that's the creepiest of them all is, it is getting the, the doll that she doesn't like off the top shelf of the closet. I literally had a doll like that. I literally had a doll that I hated so much. I put it face down in a box in the top of my closet and closed that, the door. If you woke up with that on your bed staring at you. I would have screamed. I might have called the police. Probably not. But <laughs> like I do like that. The Oh, my God. The first story. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm not an OCD person. Every picture that is hung in my house is off centered. Things are just always kind of in disarray, not messy, but there's no rhyme or reason to things really. I'm the type of person, if I go into a house of somebody who is OCD and it's like, this is where the keys go. Our books all have to be pushed to the front. You know, I'm going to that bookshelf and I'm going to push the book. Like, (laughs) just to fuck with them. Like, it just feels good that they have a little chaos in their life. Oh, that's so funny. It just bloop. So you think it's the shadow people doing that? Or you think that it's uh, somebody, a real person went in just like, (laughs) well, or the wife wife is like (laughs) fucking with him. Maybe it's him and it's really the wife that is like. Oh, he really pissed me off today. I would say that if it weren't for the other person who had their like coat laying over their bed and the couch moved to, um, I don't know if it is the shadow person, but I also love the idea of maybe like some teen who's like sneaking into people's houses and just the fucking with people too. Just fucking with people. Um, I don't, regardless, man, Steve, you're just a great writer. I love it. Um, that was magnificent. Okay. Britt, do you have another story? I do have a story from anonymous, but it's a long one. Anonymous? Anonymous. 
Anonymous shares several encounters that happen to them uh, while living in this one house. So there's several things that happen, which is why it is a bit of a long one. Okay. When I was about six years old, my mom had just purchased her first home. She was recently divorced and trying to find a house large enough for her four daughters and one son, which is very challenging to do as a single mother in California. Her budget put our family just beyond city limits, surrounded by orchards. We lived in this house for about a week before my older sister, who was 14, started complaining to my mom that she felt creeped out when she was alone. My mom thought it would pass once we all got settled in. Another week goes by and we start noticing lights being turned on and off when they shouldn't be, and items being misplaced. Soon, all of us kids felt a bit uneasy to be alone. My younger sister, who was four shared a room with me. Our room had bunk beds, piles of toys, and a rocking chair in the corner. The chair was there when we moved in, and my mom thought it was quaint, so she went ahead and kept it. Soon after we moved in, my four-year-old sister and I both started experiencing nightmares, which doesn't seem too odd except for the fact that it was the same subject matter. We both dreamt of an old woman rocking in our chair. In our dreams, <laughs> yeah, this old woman made us feel scared, not of her, but of what else was in our house. She would tell us to get knives to protect ourselves in case, in quotes, it got us. Being scared... <laughs> Being scared kids, we obliged and started hiding knives under our pillows, oh hoping that our dreams would stop. My mom was helping us clean our room one day and found our little stash of weapons. After we told her about the woman and the chair, she promptly threw that chair out and we were allowed to sleep in her room that night to help us relax. That night, the three of us lay in her bed and tried to drift off to dreamland when we start to hear the footsteps. It sounded like someone was walking around our living room and coming down the hallway. It was past bedtime, so my mom thought it was one of the other kids wandering around, and she yelled at them, Go to bed! It sounded like the footsteps were coming closer to her bedroom. She called out again, Seriously, go to bed! and started to get out of bed, when the door opened, the hallway light was on, but no one was outside the door. The hallway was empty. She checked my baby brother and sister's room. They were the two-year-old twins and my 14-year-old sister. All of them were still in bed, but heard the steps too. Everyone is a bit freaked out, but we're told to go to sleep and not worry. The next day, my mom makes a point to keep us kids distracted and outside for most of the day. By the time it's time to come inside, we're all wiped and ready to pass out. Sometime in the night, I woke up needing to pee, so I walked into the hallway, flip on the lights, and go towards the bathroom. I pull down my Scooby-Doo pajama bottoms and sit on the toilet when I get the most overwhelming sensation that I'm not alone. Everything is still, and the air becomes so tense that it almost feels oppressing. The shower curtain is closed. <laughs> oh, I know. It gets me every time. <laughs> but I know that something is on the other no. side. Just as I start peeing, when the curtain is forcefully pulled open, I run out of the restroom so fast that I don't even pull up my pants and I'm peeing down the hallway going towards my room. I don't even stop to turn off the hallway light as I hide behind my open door. I can hear footsteps coming down the hallway closer to me. Does that sound like footsteps? Maybe not. The steps sound heavy, almost like fast stomping. Oh, I should do it better. Can you hear this? Ooh, yeah. I'm petrified and started to cry when I hear what sounds like labored breathing. <sighs> The light from the hallway shines in my room as I see a shadow form on the ground blocking some of the light. I finally find my voice and scream like a fucking banshee. <laughs> and cue, cue Alyssa's banshee scream. Ah! 
My mom and 14-year-old sister are in my room within seconds, and my younger sister looks very upset that I woke her up in such a way. I explain what happened to them through my sobbing. Everyone was confused, especially when they realized I was half-naked and covered in my piss. <laughs> my mom makes me take a bath. Oh, my God. Oh, not back in the shower bath. with you. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hopefully a different bath. And I slept with her that night. The oppressing atmosphere transitions into seeing shadows around the house, witnessing doors opening and light switching, flipping on and off almost daily. We even heard voices a couple of times. My mom started checking in on us each night before she went to bed to make sure we were okay. One night she finished doing her rounds when she walked past my room. I was on the top bunk, I was on the top bunk and peacefully asleep but my blankets were off of me and looked like someone was sitting underneath them at the end of my bed. It looked like the figure was facing her. She said she was in disbelief and couldn't react at first, but then the blanket drops back onto me abruptly. She turned on the lights and rushed us into her room that night. I'm pretty sure that was the last time we had slept in our room. My mom thought after that we deserved a dog. And to be honest, I think it made her feel better to have some sort of protection. So we got a white boxer mix named Snowball. Snowball was fantastic and made me feel safe. He also alerted us when anything we couldn't see was around. We'd be lounging together in the living room and he'd randomly jerk up and start growling in a direction. We never saw what he did, but we knew that he sensed it. He did this a few times a day, but I'm convinced that he had an impact on the presence because things seemed to calm down for a while. I was in the garage playing with Snowball one day when I heard what sounded like kids laughing, but like 10 kids laughing very closely to me. Snowball jumps up and starts snapping in all directions around me. He has a crazed look in his eye and starts to whimper when the laughing stops. It's replaced with a really low growling noise that isn't coming from my dog. I start crying and screaming for my sisters who were home. They come in the garage and we decided to play outside until my mom came home from work. As soon as we open the front door, Snowball runs out and takes off down the, hu- down the road. And they go on for a while uh, talking about how Snowball ends up coming home But shortly after that, they end up um, moving out of this house and they say our forever home turned out, turned into a short lived nightmare. And I'm still afraid of the dark at 24 years old, but it did bring my family closer together. When you're tormented by an unforeseen force in your home, everything seems a bit easier. Um, And they have like, Five other things that happened. These were like the top things that I felt worthy of sharing. But like that house was haunted as hell. I mean, maybe that's why it was affordable for this woman and her children. Probably, probably. But it's like already this poor mom is in like the worst of situations already of having to like be a single mom of five and search for a affordable place to live and... Oh, what a nightmare. With twin babies, too. Like, oh, oh my, my gosh. God. Um, okay, oh no. that whole, I can never let Odin listen to this episode because that whole um, shower, curtain shower curtain scenario mm-hmm. is exactly what he expects to happen every single time he goes into the bathroom. Like, I'm almost 40 years old, Alyssa, and to this day, and it is worse in strangers' houses, but even my own, if that shower is, curtain is closed... I for sure see something moving underneath behind it. Like, I, it scares me to this day. Yeah. I'm I with mean, you, Odin. Well, the other day, Odin, I popped into the bathroom while Odin was showering. And the, he was standing there with the shower curtain wide open. <laughs> 
and the shower going. Like he doesn't use the shower he's curtain. Scared apparently. of it the other way. <laughs> yes, both ways. It doesn't matter. He, that shower curtain. If he's in there using the bathroom, he wants it open. If he's in the shower, like it explains why we have flood damage, like on our ceiling. Like he just oh, leaves it open because he cannot. He needs one of those. Actually, both of us. We need one of those clear ones yeah. where it's totally. You know, who cares if he sees you showering? At least you know what's on the other side. We have one of those, but he won't use that because he's too scared of my bathroom because we did Bloody Mary one time in there and I totally <laughs> joked with him and I like hit the mirror and it made this noise and oh my God, ruined him yours. forever on it. It was his idea. I love that, but I... <laughs> You're the best mom ever. It wasn't my idea. I was like, oh, and I paid every day, every day, like 12. Oh. I literally had to go because... Odin has coronavirus. Odin has COVID. And I had to take Milo to the bus stop today, which is just like a minute down the road. It's it's very close. It's at the end of our street. And he's like, Mom, no, don't leave me. Don't leave me alone in here. No. Like he's terrified of being alone. But anyway, so yeah, that does sound terrifying. I don't blame her for being scared of the dark still at 24. Just a bad dark entity. I wonder in any of the other stories, did she have any idea what it was? Or the back? Because there's the old old lady lady. who's like, be afraid of it. Like hide the knives. Oh my God. And both of the kids have the same dream. I like how the mom is like, oh fuck no. Just toss that (laughs) chair right out of here. She knew. But did um did this start happening once she threw the chair away? Like did that Oh, it is the very that the way it's told is like that very next night they hear the walking. Or that very night they hear the walking in the hallway and nobody's there. Ooh, it could be attached to the chair. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, or the chair was the thing protecting them because the old lady sat the in the chair. The old lady was like protecting it and she got rid of the old lady chair. <gasps> uh-huh. And then it opened them up. And then something so innocent as children laughter. And you're like, oh, that's sweet. The dog's chasing the kids. And then all of a sudden there's like the evil growl. Like, oh, oh." yeah, the dog definitely like knew something. Oh, I really wish I knew what they were seeing or, you know. Oh, oh. and one thing that they said um, at the end, so Snowball runs out the front door after that situation and then ends up returning, but refused to go back in the house. So they ended up staying with their grandmother and then eventually moved to like a whole different state. But what the ha- I oh. want to know like about more about the house. I want to know the history of it. I want to know the address. I want to know like the age. I want to know everything mm-hmm. about this house. And I try know. to figure out what the hell is going on over there. Um, Problem solve. Oh my gosh. That was a great story. That was super spooky. Uh, okay. Hey, Britt. I think we're we did done today. It. I think that's I it. I think so. There, yes. We Again, we had to do qu- uh, pretty quick. Um, Britt is moving by the time you listen to this. Britt will be living in Portland. I will be either on the oh, road maybe. towards Portland or maybe possibly there. But yeah, the next time we record um, another series of stories like this... Um, <gasps> Yeah, I'll be in Oregon. We'll be in the t- same time zone. That's so I know it's going to be so easy. <laughs> yes, if you make it. What was well, that? If I make that? it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not what I mean. <laughs> I'm going to make it. There will be no accidents or interruptions. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Did you just curse me with your Irish curses? <laughs> I was just a half like, oh, Odin has COVID. I think I my brain is just so fried. I was, I'm God, like I so. You don't have it too. Half dead right now, and so I think somewhere in my brain, I was like, if you don't give coronavirus along the way, but it just came out. <laughs> if you make it. I just love it. Don't curse me. No. no. Good no, vibes. No. Good vibes, no, everybody. You will make it. You will make Positive it. Positive words, but- intentions. Yes. Um. Yeah. And then hopefully we'll be able to see. I'll we'll, we'll have some. We're going to do some more. Summer. We're going to do some more in person recordings. Yeah. I'm just about that because what we're, we're going to be, I think, two and, two and a half hours from Fun each right. other. It's going to be wonderful. 
Yay. I can't wait. Um, okay. So yeah. Hey everyone, if you have any stories of a haunted house or any, if, how did Steve put it? I loved the way that he put it in his story of how he was listening to a recent Skull Tales episode and a little gem hitched a ride out of the darkness and into the cortex. God, he's so good. Wow. Yes. If you have one of those gems yeah. from the vortex. <laughs> if anything, just, you know, you're listening, you're like, oh, this reminds me of that, right? Write it in. Totally. We want to hear Please. I, anything. No story too small. Oh, and if you, we did get a call on the hot bo- in the hotline. <gasps> I didn't tell you, Britt. So I think we're compiling Building some up. hotline stories here. Building up some hotline stories. If, Love it. If you would like to call in and tell us your story but through your mouth hole, then you should. <laughs> and Britt's got that phone number. That number is 302-689-DEAD, 302-689-3323. Did you say the email? Sure didn't. It is skeletalespodcast <laughs> at gmail.com. <laughs> We are also on all of the social medias. Just find us over there under Skeletales or Skeletales Podcast. You can message us there or just comment and enjoy the uh, journey that is social media with us. Yes. One thing I did want to know is that we are participating in some beta testing with advertising. And so you may be hearing some ads come in in very weird spots. And uh, we apologize. Hopefully that will improve um, in the future. We're, we're working on it. But again, it's just beta testing. And we don't really have a lot of choice right now where those are going to end up. So, But this us. is so important because it's like helping us be able to afford to continue to give out episodes each week. Exactly. So, even though it might be a little annoying, trust us, it's worth it. Yes, it's supporting the podcast. Um, other ways you can support the podcast is just telling a friend, liking, commenting, sharing, uh, yeah, and just yep. speaking, spreading the word of skeletales. Um, I feel like my brain has time traveled backwards. And I don't know, in a circular backwards. And we're back at the beginning of the episode. Or something. I don't know. And this is skeleton. My brain, not right here. (laughs) It went to an end. Oh, well, good luck nursing your sweet Odin back to health. And hopefully he does okay. Oh, I'm sure he will be okay. I'm hope. Yeah. He's calling me again. I think that's it. My eye is twitching because (laughs) he is a high maintenance (laughs) sickling right now. Will you tell Odin something for me, though, before we go? Oh, yeah, sure. What's up? Haunt y'all later. Haunt you later. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye.